Remember I once said, wouldn't be free the day you die? Worthless. I'll kill you! The opening sequence of this episode is pretty horrifying. It finds Tommy and Mama? his parents in the middle of a big brawl. Tommy's a little bit of a puppy dog. I mean, he, you know, he's got a lot of bark. And he's got a lot of bite, too, but honestly, he's not mature. So when things don't go his way, he doesn't really know what to do. Tommy shows up unannounced at Sam's house and reveals that he's killed their parents. Jesus! Sam, as always, is, uh, you know, a rock and is there for Tommy. While they're en route to get rid of the bodies, they're pulled over by Andy Belfler. I figured I'd stay with Tommy in the back of the van and play a lot of the dialogue from his point of view of him listening. So he's following their voices around the van. And the moment that Andy pulls the gates of the truck open, we see that Tommy shifted into an alligator. That was actually hilarious because we had to decide between an alligator puppet and a real alligator. We looked at real alligators, you know, and they kind of prodded him a little bit because we needed the alligator to kind of like snap at the camera and snap at the actors. We found that he didn't have any teeth because they were in hibernation. And what happens, I guess, in their off-season months is that their teeth regenerate and they fall out. So we ended up working with a really cool puppeteer, and what you'll see in the show is a mixture of a puppet and a real alligator. Oh, I'm going to hell. There ain't no hell, Tommy. Horses to hell. I killed both my parents and I'm gonna burn for it. I think the, the real interesting themes of, of this episode are people fighting their true nature. Um, you know, Tommy's convinced that he'll be punished for it and he'll be punished for his true nature. Eric is fighting his sort of vampire former self and, you know, this idea of being good, even though he has no recollection of who he was. There's a great scene where Eric comes out of his cubby and goes to find Suki. And uh, he's met by Godric while he's watching Suki sleep. You are incapable of love. Well, it turns out to be a dream. And so we had this great sequence of scenes where first we saw the dream, and then we actually tried to recreate the same scene in feeling anyway, in the way we filmed it. When Suki wakes up, Eric ends up kind of getting into bed with her because he had a bad dream. And it sort of plants the seeds of the romantic entanglement between Suki and Eric. Eric leaves her because he's afraid of hurting her, and she calls him back. We have a long-awaited kiss between Suki and Eric Northman. Big fans of the show have been waiting four seasons. I thought that like the way they played the kiss was beautiful. It didn't seem like it was pandering. It just seemed like it was real. And two characters have been waiting a long time for something to happen. Since Jesus and Lafayette have teamed up with Marnie, they've gotten themselves embroiled with these vampires again. What you're left with are two very scared people. They go down to Mexico to meet Don Bartolo who is Jesus' grandfather, and he's a brujo, like Jesus. The last time I saw my grandfather was on my ninth birthday. Jesus tells the story when his grandfather gives him a gift of a goat. He thinks it's gonna be a pet, but the grandfather forces him to ritualistically kill the goat. What we ended up doing was bonding the boy with the goat. He would feed the goat, and the goat kind of became really friendly to him, as animals do when you feed them. And then the guy who played the grandfather Dell had this great way. The goat sort of thought he was getting a, a neck massage and they were just kind of wrestling around with the goat and having a great time and the boy pretended to stab him and he splattered him with blood. We never showed a knife hitting a goat. Uh, it was all sort of, you know, action and splatter and, and implied. And it's fun to see how the viewer can infer things that aren't there just because they're shot a certain way. Don Martello actually is pivotal because he sends our characters in a new direction and tries to help them find a way to, uh, to beat the bad guys. He don't do it nicely. He's, uh, he teaches you by, by mean, hard example. 